So all the engines are running. They get to their final board. And this will probably be somewhere around an 18 lap race. And it's all about the clock. Let's take a look then at how they line up for the Sussex Trophy in the 2022 Goodwood Revival meeting. 54 thousandths of a second covering the top three, which comprise front-engined Ferrari Dino versus front-engined Lotus 15s. It's Sam Hancock on pole, Miles Griffiths and Roger Wills are his front row adversaries. Don't count out the Tijero Jag of James Costigan behind or the Lister Costin of David Hart. That'll be quick here as well. James Wood, another Lotus, the Sadler Chevrolet of Julian Mujou and the second Lister Costin in the field. That's Mark Donner. He starts eight ahead of Olivier Hart in the family Maserati 300S and the Cooper T38 of Freddie Wakeman. So that rounds out your top ten behind them. Safer Sam in a Lister Nobly, very much, very much different shape to the, the Lister Costin. D-Type Jack, the long-nosed car of Gary Pearson, and a second Nobly with Harrison Newey, hoping for a little bit better fortune and maybe more distance in this Jaguar-powered car than he had in the E-Type. And again, a variety of big names like Jaguar and Lotus and smaller names like the HWM of Andy Prio. That's uh, on its own in this field amongst a sea of other rivals. And Prio had a pretty decent run in qualifying to be 17th out of the 29 starters. He's hoping to find a bit more pace. It's the first time he's really driven the car in anger. And so he'll be hoping to go just that little bit quicker. Got plenty to conjure with all the way up and down the grid and as ever with some fairly small margins between the cars in practice we're going to see lots of different battles for supremacy all the way through our field. 29 starters, 25 minutes and winner takes it all. Well, gets the cigar. It is a beautiful Sunday afternoon. It is cool, but not too overcast. Track conditions are perfect. Everybody has kept their fluids largely on board in the last few races. So our competitors for the Sussex Trophy should hopefully have a fantastic near half hour of door handle to door handle battling. Bruce Jones, it should be an absolute belter. OK, with the qualifying times being so, so super tight, let's just tell you the colours of the first few cars. The front row, it's red, orange and white. The second row, it is blue and dark green. Will they be in that order when they get even as far as the first quarter? The first part of Magic will wait and see, but this could be the closest race of the whole meeting for the front handful of qualifiers. They are so, so super close. And of course, in the straights, expect the Ferrari, the Tajero, and uh, the Lister to be very quick indeed. But round the corners, the car starting second and third, the orange Miles Griffiths driven Lotus. And on the outside, the front row, the white one with the black flashes. Of course, it's black, it's New Zealand, and it's Roger Wills. Look out for them through the kerny bits. Well, really, the critical thing for Sam Hancock on pole is to get and stay in front of the Lotuses because their advantage will be in minimum corner speed over him and if they get in front they'll go and he won't be able he'll be able to power up behind them but he won't be able to outbreak them and possibly not out corner them either so he must stay in front of the lotuses roger wills who we said many times a winner here at goodwood in that car and miles griffiths is certainly no slouch so it is going to be a very tough task indeed. Sam Hancock just squeezing onto pole by 42,000. So away they go. Sam Hancock doesn't get the greatest start, but he does get away better than Roger Wills in the centre. Uh, oh, there's a drama there for somebody in the centre. Miles Griffiths drops back and through goes 33. That's David Hart. Big start from the Dutch veteran. But it is Sam Hancock that leads in the red Ferrari. <laughs> David Hart up to second using that champion power superbly. And look down the inside as well. Here comes James Cottingham in the list of Costin. He too goes by the orange car, Miles Griffiths. Yeah. The Lotuses did not get hooked up at all. No, but don't expect them to. They're far, far better through through the tighter corners, not with the grunt. And another car, look in the background, a green and yellow list of Nobly. I think that's Harrison Newey. Up yeah. from, uh, Sutton. He's gained about three positions so far. Now we get to the part of the track, St Mary's and down to Lavin, where the Lotus have a bit more opportunity, but a brilliant start from Sam. Uh, looks like Gary Pearce and Harrison Newey may have had a problem according to our timing screen. I'm not sure that that's right. So was there another list of Nobly ahead of him? No. Uh, yeah, Sy Fassam. Okay, and there is the car. car. So there has been contact somewhere. There was oh, a, car a car standing on the grid. Yep, still on. 
And this is car 25 that just didn't re oh, car, car 26 just didn't get away yeah, very that's well. Like, that's uh, James Wood, yes. Green Allowance car. Yeah. Let's take a look just on the left side hand side of your screen. No, just going nowhere from the third row. Well, that's, largely got past, yeah, but that's unfortunately you're still gear, waiting. It? it got going and then stripped a gear, and he is just stranded. Scary moments there for James Wood, but uh, the car did get past another car at the back of the grid, not getting away well. One of the uh, Ferrari uh, Testarossas. Is that, is that yes? That's a yellow Testarossa. No. So the safety car picks up the field as they come round, and at the end of the opening lap, in fact, the Ferrari isn't in front. We've uh, had a change of position. Maybe was that fourth safety car afterwards? But uh, David Hart has got his green Lister into the lead of the race. Well, he is sort of suggesting that he got the lead from Sam Hancock. Be interesting to see quite when and where that happened, and the stewards will definitely look at when and where that happens compared to yeah, how the Sam's going back in front. Come, come on. Um, I think there's a little confusion there over exactly where the safety boards came out first, whether the move was made or not. The timing and scoring shows David Hart in front, but then he did cross the line, so it would. Yeah, and uh, we talked about Harrison Newey getting up to sixth place. He's actually in seventh place because it seems Shane Brereton has moved back ahead in the Cooper uh, Climax Monaco. Right. So, so the order is Hart, Hancock, Wills, Cottingham and Griffiths. They're the top five. Those are the front row reshuffled. Gary Pearson there, car number seven, the Jaguar D-Type. So easy to spot with its uh, long nose, the, the, the second version of the car that raced at Le Mans. Less successfully, actually, than the short nose. But, of course, that fin behind the driver's head. So absolutely spotting, uh, easy to spot a D-Type. So David Hart is the leader then from the red car of Sam Hancock. Right, we lost Andy Prio as we well. Lost three cars. We talked about James Wood at the start, didn't get away, possibly no gears whatsoever. 545 five, Andy Prio and Stephen O'Leary's HWM Jan Jaguar and car number eight, Manuel, uh, Manuel Elisab uh, in uh, Carlos Miguel's Cooper Jaguar, one of the T38s. Right, so don't know quite where we lost them and that may well be well, in addition to the car stranded on the grid, which is obviously a bit of an issue, um, that would definitely have called for a safety car anyway. But uh, we may have other cars that also need rescuing. Clock continues to run, so 25 minutes less whatever time it is before we go green. We had one racing lap, and David Hart, I don't know if he's got jet-assisted takeoff as standard in that uh, list of costume, but oh boy, didn't he go. And look at the difference between Brian Lister with uh, with Frank Costin's aerodynamic input in that car compared to the Lister Nobly from Brian. Right, here's the pass. Now, the real question is, ah, safety car boards are out behind them, but were they out when they went past? Looking well, at that, we saw the pass, and then as the cars came closer towards us, arms were out of the cockpit, indicating that they had seen yellow flags and safety car boards in front. So. That, very likely, I think, is going to be allowed to stand. And I say, what, what was always predictable at the start was the uh, the Ferrari made a decent start, and the cars from the second row, they had three points, I mean, taking David Hart's car, car number yeah. 33, it's got the, the Jaguar 3.8 litre engine, of course it's going to outdrag a little, albeit lighter, Lotus with just two litres in its tail. And a 2.4 litre Ferrari as well, so the, the Ferrari, okay, now, Sam Hancock is waving, suggesting perhaps that he needs to go behind here, that David Hart, he, needs to go behind me, yeah, it's Sam Hancock. Hook it back, because of course the shot yeah. we were shown looking back up the lab and straight doesn't show what was level with the camera. There could have been another SC board we could see. There's James Wood, who would be frustrated, but just frankly relieved that no one collected the tail end of his Lotus when he was sitting stationary and, on the grid. And, and, and you know what, so will everybody else who was hammering away from the start in a cloud of tyre smoke, and then, oh, suddenly there's something absolutely stationary in the, in the road. That's... Uh, because then your spatial awareness of what other fast-moving metal is around you suddenly really comes into play. Well, Harry Newey up to sixth position in that bright green and yellow list of Nobly. And again, look, you can see why it, it, it was known in period before it even was shown to the public as the list of Nobly because the wife of one of the designers came in and saw the car as it was being finished off and, and famously said, oh, that's very Nobly, isn't it? And the, uh, the more off. aerodynamic Lister Costin in front, much lower line car. And again, the Tijero uh, behind it, that uh, bright blue uh, John Tijero design car. Again, a much lower line version. Same size wheels, same size engine, somehow managed to shrink wrap the body a little more than on the Lister Nobly. So James Wood's car just being squeaked 
flat yep. off the grid there, the flat bit, just to make sure it doesn't take a gate post with it and that we be taken back to the paddock. But uh, now taking a look, the race is being led at this point by the red Ferrari with uh, Sam Hancock and then pulling alongside the number three, 33 Sam's Lester. already slowing down Sam here. is slowing down. Sam is already slowing down there. Well, the board is only going out in the background, but they all they all get put out at the same time because race control will be on the radio to all the marshals going, safety car, safety car. So Sam was slowing down for something that he'd seen ahead that was sort of by the camera. Well, yeah, well, lights are out on the safety car, so okay. we are going to go green, and that is the order in which we will go green unless the safety car... I'm not quite sure how you communicate that from race control to David Hart. You can tell the team as much as you like, but unless they've got a loud hailer loud enough to overcome the noise of that Jaguar straight six, he's not going to know. So we will go green this time round, and we do. Safety cars pulled away. David Hart leads the Sussex Trophy, and Sam Hancock in the 2.4 litre Ferrari is not right with him. However, in third place, Roger Wills, the White Lotus, with car number 16, James Cottingham with the Tajero Jag right behind, and the orange car, fellow front row starter, Miles Griffiths, Lotus 15, is right in the mix as well. Yeah, I really fancied the chance of James Cottingham there. He got a fantastic exit from the chicane, much more grunt than the Lotus, but through the first part of, of Madgwick, a really good line from Roger Wills, and now an even better line from uh, Sam Hancock yeah. down the inside of David Hart. And David, I think, just thought, no, out of Ford Water, you know, I, I'm not to make it difficult for you. Did he actually just at that point decide to let him by? That seemed maybe so. Maybe easy. so. Well, let's see if he comes back at. I mean, sure he will come back at him anyway. But uh, it did either look. Oh, hang on a minute. Change between the Lotuses here and the orange car of Miles Griffiths has already gone by the Tajero of James Cottingham. And now looking inside Roger Wills, he's still there. He's still there. He's still there. Can't get through underneath. And Shane Brereton is now right into that pack, car number 49. And looks like he's even made a move on AJ, on the Harrison Newey. Yeah, he has. Oh, and Harry Newey on the grass and aviating. Wow. I tell you what, talk about a, a terrifying a ride and a puncture. And a change for the lead? No, uh, it was almost a change for the lead. Harrison Newey in the number one car pulling off. I think Harrison had a, Harrison had a problem coming out of St Mary's and lost it with a, a, st a start of a puncture. Then he got pitched off onto the yeah. grass out of the and That's how Brereton got past. Well, Let's have a look at the change. Well, look at the speed of the Tajero Jag. Just goes honking past the Ferrari as Harrison Newey draws all our attention with that puncture. But at the front of that image, we had a, a change for the lead fleetingly. D uh, David Hart went in front. All the that is the highest I've ever seen the tail end of uh, a list of Nobly get off the ground so far. Harrison, he's had great speed here at uh, Gordon, but unfortunately no results at all. It's not been his day, has it? The, the, the uh, E-Type failed as he got into it, basically, on his outlap. And uh, a puncture there in the list of Nobley. So the battle between the Lotai for third, still Roger Wills just ahead of Miles Griffiths. Here's Sam Hancock, the race leader. Now he is pulling away. Roger Wills, 24 in the white car, just ahead of 37 Miles Griffiths. That's the Lotus battle for third. And actually what they need to do, there's 15 minutes left. What they need to do is sit together and just run together as a pair and close up on David Hart. And that will make James Cottingham's job harder because he'll have to go by both of them. Right now, he's able to pick them off one by one. Goes by Miles Griffiths. But as he gets onto the brakes there, I think you saw that. Uh, Miles Griffiths looking to go on the inside. James Cottingham locking up there because he was a little late on the anchors just keeping the orange Lotus behind him. And right behind Bruce, the car that perhaps we didn't uh, really fancy too much early on, the Cooper Monaco, that metallic light green car of Shane Brereton, rear-engine revolution happening in sports cars with Cooper as well as in Formula One. And that car may have something to say about the final finishing order as well. Yeah, as they fight up in front of me, he's given an opportunity to close off the tail, but Sam Hancock now driving beautifully in the lead of the race, pulling clear of this four-car battle, but also pulling clear of David Hart, two seconds on the start-finish line. But uh, this middle order, not middle order, this second-place scrap, uh, third-place scrap is uh, certainly intense. And James Cotton, we've seen him make a couple of loose moments, but these little Lotuses can put themselves, they need, can go where they want. They're so, so nimble. But the problem now for the Lotus for is, although they are relatively quick through here, Cottingham's Tajero is just going to pick up its skirts and fly down the straight. So if he gets a half-decent run here out of Lavent, then he will go steaming by Roger Wills. Here we go. He's close. Yeah, but he has to be later on the power out of Lavent. 
then the power comes, he's got so much more and he can apply it. So it's a little game for the Lotuses and then they just know the list is coming with that Jaguar engine punching through. Yeah, that Coventry Climax in the, in the uh, Lotus is just wailing away in front, but the big thumping power of that 3.8 litre XK engine, just not quite enough. He wasn't quite quick enough or close enough on the exit of St Mary's to get the run he needed off Lavant. And now look at the orange car right behind, Miles Griffiths. Just left for dead out of the chicane. Absolutely left for stone dead. And here comes Cottingham around the outside for third. That is pure grunt. I was starting to worry about James Cottingham. He was forcing himself to let break later and later into Wood Cup. I almost felt the next lap would surely, as he tried to go around a Lotus, lead to tears or at least a spin. But he's done the hard work. He's now up into third place. So it's Sam Hancock, three seconds clear, pulling away from David Hart. And then into that third place now. Really good bit of driving by James Cottingham. Well, good right race driving by James Cottingham because he forced the Lotus in front of him to defend hard, to defend late into the chicane. And by doing that, it was always going to come off a little slower and Cottingham was ready to just pull the pin on the Chichero and away he went. So Roger Wills now left to battle with Miles Griffiths and Sam Hancock has just set the fastest race lap, 125.738. Pole was a 124.855, so he's nine tenths away from the pole time and the only man to be in the 25s in the race. Looking to see who else is on the move, and this is a normal story in historic racing at certain, certainly places. Oh, that, oh big lock up again from the Tejero. continue to have their own fun, but to the Tejero, yeah, he's done it again and again into Woodcombe. That was the one time he didn't need to do it. Yeah, number 32, just looking for that engine list, that's Will Nuttall, always driving really well, Bernardo Hartox is another Lotus 15, and I really sense Mars Griffith has just got a little bit more than yep. Roger Wills, but Roger's not going to leave the door open, but <laughs> if Miles will get past in that bright orange shirt, Lotus, yeah. surely he's going to go away, but look, if you want to go around, there's the outside, see what you can do. Yeah, good luck Sunbeam, yeah, Roger Wills is not in the habit of giving away positions, as long as the car is healthy, it will be absolutely driven to the, the absolute limit and Miles Griffiths is going to have to try and work something special here but they are being dropped by the big bangers out front uh, such a fantastic range of different shape cars different sounding cars big cubic capacity engines smaller lighter revier engines and the, the waft of uh, castrol mineral oil coming in through our commentary box windows what a beautiful way to spend a Sunday afternoon, but for Miles Griffiths in car number 37, the orange Lotus just stuck behind, slower car not well, helping there. That was the Sega, that was a former England Rugby International David Cook, and it hasn't been firing very nicely all weekend, so he's got nothing to defend and stop himself from going a lap down, but now Roger Wills has had his that's the biggest margin he's had over Miles Griffiths all race, it's the battle for fourth place now, they started on the front row, but sheer cubic grunt they do not have. It's interesting, isn't it? That clearly shows that Hart and Cottingham in those two big Jaguar engines cars in front didn't get the best out of them in practice. So for whatever reason, maybe not quite set up, maybe not quite as, as fresh to or, or as uh, bedded into Goodwood as these two drivers, but the Lotuses were quicker in practice and only just a whisker away from the speed of Sam Hancock in the lead Ferrari, but at the moment, they can't get within half a second of his pace. And the advantage of the front of the field actually coming down rather than going out. Sam Hancock had been adding a few tenths here or there, but it's down to 3.3 seconds. So David Hart starting to fight back, but the top five cars lapping in such a similar pace. Now, one thing when you're a race leader and you catch traffic is you're the first guy to catch traffic. And so it sort of, rings the alarm bell and by by the time the back marker has been passed then when another quicker car arrives they're a little bit more alert to it now there's not a lot of traffic yet and roger wills again holding the inside line but around the outside in lavent and all the way around the outside goes miles griffiths so again that was set up probably from the exit of magic just creeping 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 closer now Wills is going to have to try and find a way through on the brakes as they get down to Woodcut. There's the race leader, there is a slower car in front, he'll catch him just about at the chicane. And the Lotus is still Roger Wills on the inside. Oh, hand up for Sam Hancock, he's coming through the chicane. No, who's I think just saying yeah. thank you, or was he? Let's yeah. check. No, he's coming in. Puff of smoke, Hancock into the pit into lane, the races so. over to Sam Hancock. So David Hart versus Jeremy Cottingham. Yeah, something tightened there suddenly on the car and into the pit lane and out of the race, Sam Hancock.
Well, you can that's see the car very, is smoking from under the bonnet. Very good awareness from Sam. And again, it's the experience of driving this car. You recognise the sounds for, but yeah. hopefully nothing too expensive there. Hopefully by coming in when he did, he saved the problem. So let's take a look. This is this fantastic scrap. Mars Griff is ahead in that battle for what was fourth place. Roger Wills down the inside. That is brave and he hangs on in there. But again, who's going to break later when they go down to Woodcourt? And traditionally it's been Miles Griffiths, but uh, what a scrap and a brilliant run through the Lavin King there. That was fortitude of the best order for Roger Wills to move up that position. Rear body clamshell on Miles Griffiths' orange car is starting to come a little bit loose as well. Let's hope it doesn't get any looser. Roger Wills again under pressure. This is now for third place, don't forget. And through goes the orange machine on the inside. This, I'm afraid, is not going to be sold for at least another 8 minutes and 15 seconds. They're not giving up. Don't be afraid, we're welcoming this. This is an absolutely fantastic scrap for third place. Now, what's happening up front? David Hart leading by 1.2 seconds. That's not very much over James Cottingham, who's uh, closing in bit by bit. He gained a quarter of a second last time around, and then there's that gap back to this wonderful scrap over what is now third place. But there's traffic yeah. up ahead. It could be a problem for some. Yeah, it's going to be a real problem for David Hart because James Cottingham was not 1.2 seconds behind. He was barely 1.2 car lengths behind. So there, Sam Hancock out of the car. We could see a pass for the lead in this lap though so Sam Hancock heading down oh. and suddenly woof lots of oil smoke coming out from under the bonnet hopefully not followed by lots of clattery noises or joined by lots of clattery noises but there's the lead battle there's Hart and Cottingham one two they were a second apart that's still not a second oh, there's a back marker well in front can they negotiate the traffic I'm just think feeling for Sam Hancock not just because he retired but because he's getting a face oh. of steam as you're just trying to get into the braking zone if the wood could and that was taking to the curbs of Cottingham, the, Cottingham yeah, the door key. was definitely closed on in there by uh, the slower car so Cottingham now right with David Hart, James Cottingham from fourth on the grid, electrifying getaway at the start, made a good restart as did David Hart and with Sam Hancock's Ferrari crying off, they are left to battle for victory here. Right, thus far in the race, the faster of these twos in terms of their, be of their best laps so far is James Cottingham, two tenths of a second faster than the car in front, but he hasn't got that much time to try and find this advantage, use this advantage, only six and a half minutes remain. And it's going to be a case of whose tyres are sweeter at the end, or possibly, quite possibly, Martin, which car, which back marker just can't get out of their path. Absolutely. Because certainly what we saw there, when the door was closing, James Cottingham isn't taking no for an answer. He couldn't afford to back off. He bounced off the curbs at St Mary's. And Cottingham is the quicker of the two when they're not in traffic. Two tenths quicker on that last lap. It's down to a quarter oh. of a second. Oh my Cooling word. fan on the Maserati dropping out. That was Olivier Hart. So one Hart's doing well and leading the race. And yeah. that is one of the most unusual sorts I've seen in yeah. motor racing. Uh, it's, it's not a fan car sort of assistance. That's just the electric cooling fan that has dropped out. It wasn't running. It's actually being just turned by the airflow. Now it's dropped off the radiator. Headlights on on James Cottingham's car. All the tricks in the books. This is where he nearly got chopped off the circuit by the back marker last lap. And David Hart knows that this is going to be a fight for survival because Cottingham has closed relentlessly on the number 33 car. What the lies Dutchman. ahead, Martin? Yeah. Joseph Otten Retemeyer. He'll be a lap down in the Maserati Birdcage, the white one with the red stripe. But where will they find it? Through the first part of lap, and they're coming to the second part. Looks so like they'll get their power down without interruption. Oh, beautiful slide from James Cottingham in the background. They should catch it down the straight. Whoa. The Lotuses are closing, Miles Griffiths in third, Roger Wills in fourth, we could be in for a grandstand finish, there's the birdcage Maserati and already James Cottingham looking to try and slot up the inside of David Hart, oh doesn't get through, the door's not open because uh, David Hart had to look to the inside Two, of three, the four. Maserati. Now we've got first three yeah. cars in a row and what Let's happens? Roger Wills. But big car, heavy car, eats its tyres. Small light Lotus does not eat its tyres to the same extent. Up equal into second place, not quite. Doesn't have the ground down the start, finish straight. When we get to the back of the circuit, look for Miles Griffiths in that orange Lotus. His tail is up, he's on the move. Ooh, James Cotton, we have to go the long way around the outside. I have to say, that was probably all traffic that allowed the Lotuses to close in there because they caught the Mazda at the end of the lap and straight. They had to follow him all the way through Woodcut, down through the chicane, and that really blunted their speed enormously. Whereas the Lotus was still going at its top speed, right to the chicane and has closed in and again look how much more Cottingham's got it goes the long way around the outside David Hart almost made contact little hand out to the cockpit thank you says James Cottingham enough racing room it is just enough racing room James Cottingham leads in the list of Costin second place is David Hart and in third place 
is now Miles Griffiths in the Lotus 15. In well, the Tichero Jack, sorry, leading James Cossingham. The Lister Costin in second. That was a very, very hairy moment. I thought suddenly Miles Griffiths might be in the lead of the race, but somehow. James Cotting got back onto terra firma now. With, look, the clock's counting down, just under four minutes remaining. The Lotus will close in again when they get to Woodcut. Every time they go down the lap straight, it drops back. But look how nimble it is. But what we need to do is swing around and see who, what car is sitting in front, what car's about to be lapped. Because every time there's a slower car, that's the moment that the Miles Griffiths Lotus closes right in. Oh, we, we will just document for the for, for completion, by the way, that Will Nuttall's now up to fifth ahead of the Brayton Cooper. So Will Nuttall up to fifth position. I'm not going to take my eyes off the screen to see where exactly he qualified, but he's coming well up the order. Take a look here. Oh, that was a big moment as he hit the compression to go around the outside. And I thought there he was going to get tagged in the rear. David Hart just had enough to give him some space. Oh dear, number 54 Lister, Chevrolet Cossin, Chris Milner off and uh, just a little bit of flame out. You can see he's spun across the grass. You can see his signature. Uh, four wheel lines across the grass, but up front it's still, it's now James Cottingham from David Hart and it's very, very close. Last time they had the big moment down here, this time Miles Griffiths is right on the tail of the Lister, trying to get that second place, maybe into Lavin, but Cottingham just starting to eke out a little advantage. So the, the look of these three different cars shows how sports car racing is developing, but David Hart in that Lister Costin, his has got a Jaguar engine, the car we just saw in the grass, identical car, but with a Chevy V8. So there you go, there is a list of Costin, same car, different power plant. Again, you know, you buy the chassis from Brian Lister, you put whatever you want in it, or he will put whatever you want in it. And oh, just that left rear wheel, the laden wheel, drifting out onto the grass, and away goes all your grip, and it may as well be ice and trouble for the uh, number 11 as well. That is uh, Freddie Wakeman in his Cooper Jag. Yeah, that he was running in 10th place, uh, running very close to Gary Pearson's deep side. Uh, it's a red flag, two minutes to go and a couple of stranded cars. It's Freddie Wakeman's car that's the real problem down there. Not for the leaders, but for everybody else as well coming down to the chicane. So red flag, the race is over. It is victory for James Cottingham. David Hart hangs on to second. He sees the red flag, James Cottingham, he knows what it means. They, uh, they threw the red at the line, so that lap counts. He is the leader, he is the winner. And Miles Griffiths in third from Roger Wills. And Will Nuttall got that move for fifth made just in time. Yeah, Will's been driving beautifully all weekend, so Now well I'm looking learned. to see where he qualified. <laughs> Where did he qualify? Again, I've gone number blind. He, he took over Bernardo Hartog's car from uh -huh, 21st yes. up to 5th, so that's probably one of the drives of the weekend, just out of the scope of that top four. Uh, incredible scrapper. But you have to feel also, just remember, Sam Hancock was uh, looking very, very good at the front of the race, but he was fully aware when he could no longer see the grandstand, so much steam and smoke yeah. coming into the cockpit, into his face, it was time to call, call in at the pits. So a uh, determined pass on David Hart at the very first opportunity he had from James, James Cottingham in car number 16, and that has paid off. Qualified in fourth place, he was just 13 hundredths off pole and still fourth in a field of this variety and quality. Well, that's where the big spin was uh, for Freddie Wakeman in the uh, T38 Cooper Jag. No harm done. But the car, unfortunately, stranded in a very tricky position. So our top three will come to the line. I wonder who's... <laughs> Ed, who is normally six foot seven, clearly also on cloud nine, if he's interviewing, will be having to reach a long way down to our top three. James Cottingham, David Hart and Miles Griffiths. Well, what great variety this Sussex Trophy race always brings. Imagine a sports car, then imagine a different one, put a different engine in and a different shape in a different place. Imagine some more of those and some different ones again. Again, it, it just shows what a fertile breeding ground the late 50s and early 60s were in motor racing. All of that technology that was uh, sped up through World War II, all those designers that learned their craft in the aircraft industry through World War II and beyond suddenly brought their attention to motor racing and it exploded and we've seen 
just the, the different variety of cars that would have raced against each other in period. This isn't sort of a 15 or 20 escape, we're just chucking cars on the grid. These would all have raced against each other in period in a four or five year spread. So fantastic, actually, James Cottingham absolutely buzzing, isn't he? Well, it's just so much sideways, so much fun. You need a scrap. It doesn't matter if it's over first, over 14th, 15th, 20th, but that was a proper scrap. That, and that pass on David Hart, that's one of the passes of the meeting. Genuinely, look, not a touch on it. Great respect from these two guys. They are big, fast sports cars. And if there'd been contact there, then that would have been a very wild ride. But James Cottingham looking rightly pretty pleased. Miles Griffiths uh, taking third place in the Lotus 15. And this time, no garland, no cigar for Roger Wills. He's so often been here at the end of these sports car races. Ed is still, uh, I don't know, doolally somewhere. So let's catch up with David Green and hear from our top three drivers. Miles, we knew it was going to be a close race. It was certainly close over the top three there. How did it feel? A bit too close on the first lap when I had uh, contact down the right-hand side, but no, thoroughly enjoyed a close race. Um, just didn't quite have the grunt on the straights. Very close at the end, though. Yeah, you know, we were trying, but wasn't enough. Well, you're still on the podium. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay, as quickly as possible with the other two. Yeah, David, you got the lead at the safety car, <laughs> held on for a while. Yeah, I, I wasn't supposed that he uh, should uh, come so nearby. I, I, I thought I was going quick, but not quick enough. But next time I uh, will be quicker. <laughs> Did you see him coming there for that move? Yeah, no, not for that move, but I saw him coming and I, I, know, I know him a little bit. So I, I, I was supposed to uh, move, but, uh, but he knows me and I... <laughs> I also have a move, <laughs> but uh, no, no, I'm happy, I'm happy. Yesterday was three seconds off the pace and now I'm there, so... Uh, and it's, it's special because with the short wheel base I was also three seconds off the pace and a day later. So I don't know, the testing I can't do, but the racing I... Uh, <laughs> you must have thought your luck was in there when you saw Sam go off. Yeah, that's not a luck. That's a pity for him and uh, it's not nice to win, but I had, I, I had catch him anyway, so... Well, congratulations, you're still smiling and, and, and well done on second place. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. David, James, if ever there was a move to deserve first place, it was that one. Yeah, well, um, the car's never good off the line and qualifying fourth with all of us, you know, top four, having one and a half tenths between us, I knew I had my work cut out, but David had an amazing start. Obviously, you yeah, know, got miles out of the way in his own special way and there I was, like, P5, um, and I just thought, I've got to get past the Lotuses and just as I did that, then it was catching up with David. And uh, yeah, I just thought I've got to make this move now because his car was really wide. And yeah, we had a little kiss, which uh, fortunately I came off better. And obviously it was very close to the back marker, but, um, but yeah, no, super pleased to, to win in the Tajiro. And it's, yeah, I feel like I've earned it. I've earned a beer. Well, no, you certainly earned it. It, was a, it must have been a little bit of a deep breath for that move. I thought uh, Miles nearly had the win at that point, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, it was definitely one of those moments. I was just thinking, this is not the place to do this, but I've only got one chance. And well, you did it, and you got first place. Congratulations. Thank you very much.